If your child is learning their ABCs, making the alphabet out of Play-Doh or modeling clay is a great activity to help them learn. It's fun and easy. I'll show you how. <laughs> to make our Play-Doh alphabet, you need Play-Doh and some tools. You can buy Play-Doh tools at a toy store or you can use things lying around the house. You need a smooth surface to work on, a hard rolling tool like a can or a jar, a plastic knife to cut with, and then you can use whatever objects you find around your house that might make an interesting texture or shape in your Play-Doh. Let's start with blue and make a letter A. Using both of my hands to apply even pressure, I'm gonna roll the Play-Doh out into a rope. Once it gets as long as I'd like it, I'm gonna trim off the end, here and here. Fold this like that, trim off this, and there's our A. For B, let's try something a little different. We're gonna roll our dough out flat using the side of our jar. Flipping it over as you go, so that you get a nice and even pancake. Now I'm gonna use my can to cut out two circles. Put them in the middle like this. And then for the rest of my pancake, I'm gonna cut out a long line like this and set it along the sides of my circles. Now to make it look more like a B, I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center of each. Hey, bottle cap starts with B. And there we have our blue B. C is next. To make the C, I'm going to do another rope with purple. Rolling it out, nice and even. Trim off one end. And there's a C. But it's not that interesting, so I'm gonna use my knife to add little lines. C. Now to make the D, I'm gonna flip over my C and take some more of my rope I just made and put it on the end. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add some dots with the back of my pencil. D for dots. D. For E, I'm gonna use purple again. And roll it out flat. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut two equal strips. And I'll trim up the ends to make them neat. I put one here and cut the other into three parts. There's your E. Take away the bottom and you have your F. For G, let's use green. I'll make a nice long rope again. Curve it up. Put the end in, like that, and there's your G. For H, let's use our green to roll out a nice big pancake. And this time I wanna add some texture, so I'm gonna use one of my cans to roll ridges along it. Then using my knife, I'm gonna cut a rectangle. Then I'll cut out the top and the bottom, and there's our H. For I, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna roll up each little piece and make them into a ball. start to form my letter I. 
and there's an eye. The cool thing about the little balls is you can easily rearrange them. To your next letter, J. Now K. So for K, I'm going to make a thicker rope than I've made before. Using my knife, I'll cut almost halfway down there and cut through the other side too. Flip it this way. Open up the legs and there's our K. For L, let's do another flat piece. So first I'll make my long rope. Then I'm gonna roll down with my jar, smoothing it out as I go. Trim off the end, cut a short piece, then a longer piece, L for longer. Put them both together, and there's our L. I'm gonna use a chopstick to add lines. Line starts with L. Okay, M, M, M. Let's start with a mound, like the letter M for mound, and roll it into almost like a triangle until it starts to look like a little bit of a mountain. Now we're gonna trim off the sides. Cut down the middle. And there's our M and all its beautiful mountains. Next up is N. Let's stretch out a piece of rope, nice and long. Just make an N very simply. Like that. To make our O, I'll use orange. And I'll roll it into the biggest pancake yet. I'll use my largest can to cut out a circle. Then I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center. There's my O. For P, I'll cut a long strip from my leftover pancake and put it there. For Q, put a little strip in right there. There's our Q. For R, I'll cut the back of our circle off. We'll add a strip back in here and a little leg there. And there's our R. For S, I'm gonna use green again and do something a little bit special. I'm gonna roll out a rope but make it thin at one end and a little bit thicker at the other. And this will help you remember your S because it looks like a snake. For my T, I'm gonna use the green again, roll out another rope Turn the ends. And use my forks, tines, to put a little print in it. Or add texture, which also starts with T. All right, we're winding down. For you, let's take two long ropes and twist them together. Now I'm twisting them up. Turn them up like that, up like the U. And there's our U. Now our last letters are kind of similar. So we're going to do them in a special way. 
once again, we'll roll out a big pancake. This one happens to be pink. I'm gonna cut four equal length strips. First, let's make our V. There's our V. Then we add two more. There's our W. Now we take those two and flip them over. There's our X. And take one away. We have our Y. For our final letter, we use our strips again shape a Z. But let's make this Z something that kids can remember by giving it a little something extra. Let's give it stripes like a zebra. Z for zebra. And there we have it. That's our alphabet. Try making alphabet letters out of Play-Doh with your kids. Not only will they have fun, the hands-on activity will help them learn and remember their ABCs. Show me all the cool letters you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. Today's activity is called Exploding Numbers. We're using simple things like stickers, paint, and other manipulatives to teach your child early math concepts. Manipulatives are simply something that children can use with their hands. It really builds those fine motor skills and allows them to really bring the mind and the body together. I'm gonna to show you how to make this a fun, simple math activity for your children. Silas, today we're gonna to do something called exploding numbers. We're gonna use paint, we're gonna use pom-poms. You ready? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Mm -hmm. This is a really simple craft that you probably already have all the materials on hand for. We get to do numbers. You like numbers, don't you? Wait, what? zero, yeah. one, two, three again? You're right. Zero, one, two, and three. This is how we created our exploding numbers. First, we took a piece of paper and we just printed out some numbers on it. I cut them out so that Silas could attach them to a page. All right, so take your glue. I know. Oh, you know, huh? You're so smart. All right, put the glue all over that. Stick it anywhere you want on the page. You can add something like stickers. Simply ask them how many dots go along with each number. Now we're gonna put stickers. Stickles by the number. That's right, you need how many right here? One. And then? Lots of boys. Right here. Two. There you go. Okay. Now six. Six, what, what color That's do you want for six? six? This craft is a really great way to teach number sequencing as children get to recognize numbers and also how they flow in order. It also teaches subitizing, which is the recognition of looking at numbers in a set. So when they look at three stickers, they recognize immediately that there's three there. How many bright pinks do you have? Four. Let's count them. Four. Right, three. And how Four. many purples? Four. So how many purple and pink all together are there? How many do you have? Can I count all? Let's count just the pink and purple, and then you can count all of them if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're right, six. And then this is where your little one can really get their creative juices flowing. Put some paint simply on a plate for them, and then they can go to town. They can smear, they can blot, whatever they want to do to create their exploding numbers. Okay, you can paint. And you can either dab it on, or you can make streaks, whatever. You can experiment and do what you want. See on the outside, they painted all around the outside of the number. Paint the dot too, the dot will show up too. Ooh, I like that, Silas. What color do you want to add to it? Wait, I need a couple. Hmm. I can mix them. You can mix it if you want, you can experiment. Yeah. Just like they had orange and yellow. There you go. Ooh, I like that, Silas. Very creative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I do number six? Wait, can I mix them? Sure. 
They could even use these pom-poms if they wanted to, to paint with. Then, you simply peel off the numbers, go from this side, and you have a beautiful piece of artwork. Look at your exploding numbers! Do ah. you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Silas, you could see the little light bulbs going off in his head as he looked at the stickers and could count all the objects. Or when he saw the colors in the paint, he would go around and say, this color is this, and this is this color. Blue, mm -hmm. blue, blue. This is that. Hmm, what does it look Wait, like? Wait, yellow and orange mix. It does look like a mix. He also started adding all the things together on the plate. He really had a lot of fun doing it. You can also take some pom-poms, which are really fun. Fun for little fingers to hold these and use those little fine motor skills. Have them put on the page, corresponding with each number. This is also a great way to teach your little one how to do some simple addition. See your squishy pom-poms over here? Yeah. Okay, how many pom-poms equal the number zero? Would you use any pom-poms? No, zero. Because it's nothing, right? Okay, so how many do we need for this number? One! All right, find a pom-pom. Oranges! Oh, you can use orange. How many do you have? Two. Two. And what number are you going to put them by? Two. Two. Good job. Ooh, very creative on each side of the number. Using manipulatives is a great way for children to connect the brain to the body. It's something that they can visualize so that they don't have to just think in their head about what you're speaking about, but they can actually see it as well. You can count as well. Twelve. I think of it in my head. <laughs> Silas obviously had so much fun doing this activity. He especially loved painting as he got to choose what colors he got to paint on the numbers. So grab some paint, paper, and have fun with your child exploring numbers. Yay, look, look here, Silas. Cheese! Cheese! What is this? Is this mail? Or is it lunch? I think it's mail. So we're gonna take it out of your mouth but they both start with M. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and this is my daughter, Sterling. Hi. Hi. She's one year old, and she isn't talking much yet, but she understands a lot. One easy way to boost her understanding is to talk to her about anything. Um, I'll show you how. <laughs> Sterling is very curious. Well. Yeah, so no matter what I'm doing, I try to talk to her about it or you talk to me about it. Let's look through the mail. Yeah? Let's see. You seem to... Oh. You found a bill. Yeah. You want to you pay the bill? And then... Ooh. This looks like an invitation. Yeah. Oh, there's so... Oh, thank you. You're helping me sort the mail? Oh. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Ooh. Oh, what's this? Mm. Mm? Nana? Yes, it is from Nana. It is from Nana. Dear Sterling, I'm having such a good time in Paris. Oh, you want to fly away with Nana? Let's see, what else does she say to us? That's such a pretty picture. Such a pretty postcard. May I see it? No, oh, you want it all for yourself. This is all mail. Lots of letters, they come through the post office. Mail has stamps. And mail comes in all different shapes and sizes, like people. Would you like to open this note? Yeah. Yes, let's open this piece of mail together. Let's look, there's so much. Oh, you're gonna hold on to it? Yeah. All right, why don't you hold on to that piece of mail? All right, let's open this piece. This is an invitation from our friend. Let's open it together. Let's open this mail. Mama. Yeah. Let's see. It's inside. Ooh. Yeah. Dear Mama. Sterling. Babies and kids are sensitive. They feel the tone in your voice. That's why it's so important to talk to them about what you're doing. They hear a calm, happy voice, and they feel safe. Sometimes it can even calm them when they're fussy. Let's make mom some tea, huh? Which one? Oh, you're ready for some tea. Are you a tea drinker? All right, let's look and see what kinds we have. We have green tea, Earl Grey, or <laughs> English breakfast. Oh, it looks like all three is our winners. Let's see. Around town. 
Oh, you just want to eat up New York City, don't you? Just want to eat it all up. Will you follow along with me? Ooh, Arbor Weekend at Wave Hill. I love Wave Hill. Oh, let's go. Seems like you're ready for a trip. Feel free to use big words. You'll be amazed at what kids listen to. And remember, there's more to your talking than the words you say. Babies hear the tone, rhythm, and feeling in your voice, and all of those teach them how to talk. Ooh, Sterling, there's an airplane. And there are lots of buildings, and there are trees. Even in New York, there are trees. Oh, do you hear that car? They look so tiny from here. Hmm. How many buildings do you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, I can't even count that high. What else? Ooh, there's a pigeon. There's a pigeon flying across so we know it is New York City. What else? Talking to your baby or young child is one of the easiest and best ways to grow more connections in their brains. How do you talk to your baby? Show the world by hashtagging photos and videos with Mother Goose Club or commenting below. And subscribe to be the first to learn about new releases. All right, Chatterboxes, get out there and start talking. <laughs> What's up there? <laughs> really? Oh, you do love doing laundry. Yes, that's mail. And that's mail on the floor. More mail on the floor. Yes, throw out our bills. Because Sterling's great. It's just... It's just this other one. Let's look at it together. Oh, someone's sleepy. Talking to... How do you talk to your ch... All right, chatterboxes. Yeah! Oh, you did? Okay. This is Mama's script. Mm. Baby escape. <laughs> baby escape. Anything. Baby. <laughs> oh, you're very close to the edge. You're very close to the edge. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. Let's make some tea. Woo! You ready for some tea? I'll show you how. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Yeah, how's the way? <laughs> she's one year old, so she isn't talking much yet, uh, but she understands, or maybe she uh, is. Today we have another colorful and creative way to prompt some early literacy play with your kids. We've got a few materials here that we've gathered for this activity, but the materials are just the beginning. We're pretty sure you're going to laugh, pretty sure you're going to learn, so let's get crafty and let the learning begin. So for today's activity we used a wide range of materials. We used construction paper, we used pipe cleaners, glue, play-doh, cardboard, and felt. And we even used some ornamental decorative pom-poms. You're really just gonna do some twisting and turning and some clipping where needed. Okay. Do you say Q? Wait, oh. You're gonna make yeah. Q. Q! Uh, which one are you gonna make again? K. K, interesting. I All right. see. I see you. I'm making JK. There you go. That is a pink, you know that's pink, right? I will see if you can spell the word. It's symmetry. See if you can it's the same. If you cut it in half, it's the same. Nice, that's right. Oh. What other words can you spell with an O and an X? Do you, you have any ideas? Box! There you go, box. Oh, you know what? We need. Are there any. Do we, do we move the L around? Did you grab the L? I can we need one. L. Make, make, make your. Oh, you're giving a big L. Nice. Look, <laughs> look, I was kind enough to make you an L. So. Let's make, let's spell you, can we spell your name? L, look, you have an E. L. You wanna make another L, make it, go for it. Let's see what you got, let's see what you got. Let's see what, let's see what you can do. Go ahead, just, you just gotta do it like this. You just put a little crick in it. Put the little, put a little notch in it, right? Okay, 
Almost. That's very, very, very close. <laughs> That's a V. Very, very close. But it might be a more of a V. But let's try to spell your name. Let's see. L E J N N. -A oh, where's that O we made? Here. You put the O right there. Put the O at the end of those N's. Mm. Put it right there. I found it right there. Linen! Linen, that's your name, baby girl. L E N N O N. <laughs> the next set of materials that we've gathered for our letter play are the marker, construction paper, and some Play Doh. We're going to make a letter. B for Brandon. All right, great job getting the Play-Doh, guys. All right, let's open up the Play-Doh and see what we got inside. There are a couple of different ways you could do this. Now, you could take those and you could actually trace over them. Like, I did a couple over here. I don't know what happened to do. Check this out. I did a couple over here and you could put them right on top. So that's the letter C. So what you would do is you get the Play-Doh and you see if you yeah. put it right on top. All right, so so you have the letter C there. Can you say this? Can you say C? C! All right, and what sounds does the letter C make? What sound does it make? Can you say, can you say, can you say? There you go. Good job. All right. E. Here. You want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Here, you can. I want to do this one. You want to do the E? Okay, good. Now, here's what we do. Like, Isla, check this out. What I was saying is that maybe if you, like, put it down, and then you can just sort of manipulate it from there. If you put the, these right here, there you go. I Oh, nice. I made a twist press. So. Oh, and you put some put the salt on it and everything. Okay, but that's the letter D. D. One more way that you can explore your letter learning. We have a few of these fluffy balls here. We have some glue. We have some cardboard and cardboard letter cutouts, and we have some felt. The whole goal is to take this and end up with something that looks more like this. We are going to take these felt pieces and we're gonna decorate our letters, okay? We have pipe cleaners on this too. So we can do a combination of different things and then we can top, we can put these on them or whatever we wanna do. So, have at it ladies. A green one. Yeah. So put the glue right there and then we'll wrap it. I'm gonna spread it out with this little stick right here. I think that's what it's for, so we can manipulate the glue without using our fingers. No, so yuck. Here, yeah. put it down, put it down. Use your fingers. There you go. And then when you get ready, you can move on. You're gonna do the purple piece, okay? Actually, you know what? At this point, you might need to start wrapping your A's like on the inside. Does that make sense? Yeah. Press it down there yeah. a little bit and let it, you know, let it dry as best you can. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Exactly. I'm putting fluff on my little L. Put, maybe put a little bit more. That is tight. the wall. This is the A for I. This is the little L for Wendy. So we engage in the crafts as we always do with an emphasis on early literacy development. So with Lennon, we really spent a lot of time working on letter recognition. With Isla, we spent a little more time working on words and spelling. The girls had a whole lot of fun reaction today. And a lot of that comes from the engagement with the activity, the engagement with the crafts. That led to us having some real opportunities to connect, as well as them having good memories surrounding their learning experience. So during this video, we've offered you a few suggestions about how you can use a wide variety of different materials to create early literacy play, and in this particular instance, creating letters. The possibilities are literally endless. You can look around your house, find things that you may have that we didn't even think of, and use your imagination. And I guarantee you, if you use your imagination, your kids will start to use their imagination. You'll have a great time, and you'll learn a lot. Hi, I'm Kira, and this is Carolyn. She's my babysitter and also my friend. <laughs> We're going on a leather hunt at the flea market. Yes, we are. Before kids can learn how to read, they need to be able to recognize letters and relate them to the sounds they make. So when we're out and about, we like to do fun things like letter hunts to work on letter sounds. We'll show you how. <laughs> All right, Kira, let's hunt for letters. Look, there's letters on that sign. Oh, yeah. What letters do you see? E and N and T. Awesome. 
Do you know what word that is? Let's sound it out together. Enter. Enter. Awesome. All right, Kira, let's go inside and look for more letters. Look, there's a huge S. Whoa, that is a huge S. When you find a letter, try to think of a fun way to talk about the sound it makes. Hey, Kira, what sound does an S make? That's right. Can you think of an animal that starts with the letter S? Snake. That's right. How about skunk? Seal. Seal, good job. Let's go find more letters. D. Awesome. What sound does a D make? D. D, that's right. What's that? Door. Door. All right, let's see if there are any other letters in here. That's right. What sound does a pea make? What fruit is that? Pear. Pear. Do you know any other fruit that starts with pea? Pineapple. Pineapple. I love pineapple. So good. Anything else? What about a peach? <laughs> peach. Perfect. Look, another pea. You're right. That is another pea. Do you know what that says? Let's sound it out together. Pick, pick, pick up, up your toys. toys. Yes, good job. You're so smart, Kara. Let's go find some more letters. Let's go. <laughs> look, the side is on the snow globe. Oh yeah. Let's look at this one. What letter is that? L. L. That's right. What sound does an L make? Oh. Oh, right. What other letters do you see on here? An O, an N, a D, an O, and an N. You are so smart, Kira. What word does that spell? London. London. <laughs> right, give me five. You are so awesome. So let's go find more letters. <laughs> w. <laughs> That's right. Can you think of some words that start with W? Water. Water. Why? Why? What else? Walrus. Walrus. What about whiskers? Whiskers. <laughs> whiskers, that's right. You are so smart. Letters are everywhere. I know. When kids realize that letters are all over the place and not just in storybooks, they begin to understand just how important they really are. Whoa, look at all those letters. What letters do you see? I see a B. What about that? A. A. And I see a P. A P. And an N. And an N. Cat. Cat. Hat. Bat. Sat. Rat. You are so smart, girlfriend. What letter is this, Kara? M. What sound does an M make? Mm. I see a letter. This is my favorite letter. C. C. C for Carolyn. You pick a letter. K. K. K for Kira. Yeah. <laughs> what sound does the K make? K. K. Just like a C. Just like a C. Go on a letter hunt with the kids in your life and let us know how it goes by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you. So type any comments into the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about our new videos. Bye! I just want to play with all of these toys! Because I love ducks, <laughs> I love puppies. Let's see what we can find in our rhyming bag. Ring. Ting. Ping. Bling. Hi, I'm Rachel. You may know me as Teddy from the Mother Goose Club. And this is my rhyming champion, Olivia. Hi. <laughs> rhyming is a great way for kids to learn how to play with words and sounds. It also helps them to become better readers and talkers. We'll, we'll show you how. how. 
This is a great rhyming game. I've just put a bunch of things in a bag. Then you can use a container, a gift bag, paper bag, or a pillowcase. Then we pull one thing out at a time and see how many words we can find that rhyme with that one thing. So for this, we take turns. I'd take out a sock and then she would say rock. Then I'd say clock. Then she might say block. And you go on as long as you can. Take a look. Okay, Olivia, I have a sock. What rhymes a sock? Block. Good. Mm, lock. Talk. Mock. Rock. Good. <laughs> Rhyming teaches a skill called phonemic awareness. That's when kids can tell that words are made of sounds. It may seem simple, but it is so important for growing brains to practice phonemic awareness. You and your kids can rhyme all day long. When you're tying your child's shoe, you could say, hey, what rhymes with shoe or lace? Or when you're making breakfast, you could say, what rhymes with egg or juice? Sometimes I'll be silly and say, let's leave the house, mouse, or get in the car, star. Hat. Mat. Cat. Cat in the hat. <laughs> Ring. Bling. Sing. King. King. <laughs> Rhyming is a simple and easy way to learn the sounds of language. And best of all, you don't even have to use real words. The important thing is to play with sounds and have fun. Star. Nar. Car. Wars. Yes, love it. What rhymes with bug? Hug. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So get out there and start rhyming. You can't go wrong. The sillier, the better. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by sharing your rhyme ideas and activities. Just hashtag pictures and videos, Mother Goose Club, or comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Rhyming teaches phonemic awareness. Practice phonemic awareness. Oh, phonemic awareness. Doc? Tick. <laughs> it's a phenomenon that I can't say phonemic awareness. So... Don't touch the microphone with a star, okay? Hey. I put a lot. Better yeah, readers. You can't pick your nose, sweet girl. <laughs> help us and other Mother Goose Club. And help us and other Mother Goose Club. And other Mother Goose Club families. Oh my gosh, y'all. Rope? Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> when you're tying your child's shoe, child's shoe. What rhymes with tickle? <laughs> tickle, pickle. <laughs> Today, we're going to show you a game we call ABC Slam Dunk. It's a beanbag toss game that gives your kids an opportunity to work on some of those early literacy skills. So, let's get started. All right, guys, so we got some bean bags, we got some letters, and we have some words, and we're gonna play a few games. You guys ready to play? Yeah. All right, come on. Attach your letter or word cards to some bins, and then you call out a word or the letter, and then you give the kids a chance to throw the bean bags to the corresponding bin. Here. Oh, that's, bro, that's pretty good. <laughs> An example of how that might work is to say, hey, Lennon, take the red bean bag and throw it in the bin that has the L on it. So that gives her an opportunity to work on primary colors as well as working on the letter recognition. Now we have our letter cards, we have our word cards, we have our sealable plastic bags, we have a bowl of beans, we have a pair of scissors, we have some tape, and we have several little felt patches. Oh, and we have some glue. So now we're gonna put all those things together to make our bean bags. So we're gonna start off by taking this bigger plastic bag and turning it into a smaller bag for the bean bags. Make the second cut. Now I'm gonna make a small bag of the Ziploc bag. I'll take my tape. Right there. Then I'm gonna fold it over to make an edge. Take another strip here. Didn't have too much, just cut the ends off. Now I have an itty bitty bag 
for my itty bitty beans. Load these up. This actually might be fun for the kids to help you out with too. Now, you take the bean bag and you place it over here in the center of your felt. Line that felt with glue. You can use a hot glue or a super glue or pretty much whatever you have around the house that'll work on fabric. You'll take your matching felt and you'll press it around the edges. Just be sure to allow this glue or any other glue to dry before you try to use the bags. In the end, your bean bag will look like this and you're ready to go. The cool part about these bean bags is that once you make them, you have them and you can use them for other activities as well. So you pick a letter, which, letter, which letter are you gonna pick? B. B, all right, let's give it to us. Let's see if she gets it. Let's see if she gets it. <gasps> oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, then it's your turn. It's like your turn, all right. What, what letter are you gonna try to toss yours into? You can get it. Yeah! <laughs> Girl, good job, all right. Okay, okay, go on, right, one more time. You hit it, you, you hit this, I know you can do it. After the kids get used to the letters and words on the bins, then you can sort of step it up a notch. You can start keeping score, or you can even have them step back a little bit further, see if you can get them more engaged, more excited. All right, cool, when I count to three, we're gonna jump right over into our spots. Okay, ready? One, two, three, let's get it. All right, okay, all right. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. You guys get to pick whichever bin you wanna throw it in. Lennon, since you're the youngest, you go ahead and pick which one you wanna try to toss it in. Get toss it in. Oh, it's okay, okay, give it a shot again. Give it another shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Hey, Island, which one do you want to try? You know what, try, try, the, try for the L. Hit that, hit that L for your sister, hit that L for Lennon. Oh, it's pretty close. Keep going, shoot, shoot the bag over. Let's see, see if you hit that L1. Yeah, there you go, right, good job, good job. Let me see your celebration dance. Can I hit it? Dance, not sing. There you go, good job. Let me see your celebration dance. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun, but we're also exercising some letter recognition and some word recognition as well. Yeah, so I changed up the letters and now they are here. They're words, man. <laughs> Match it up. There you go, purple bag, purple linen. But we also got an opportunity to really work on some hand-eye coordination, which really went a long way, especially with Lennon, who was doing a great job, uh, really helped build her confidence. Yeah, 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 it's good. You always cheer for yourself. All right, what, all right Isla, what are you shooting for right now? Uh, school. School, okay, all right. Oh, okay, here we go. Linen. Nice, good job, you can do it. Yeah, our first shot at a girl. Nice, at a girl. Oh, nice. Look, today she had to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> For a long time, scientists have been baffled by the smallness of the atom. Hey, I'm Jesse. I have three boys. Diego, Zion, and Kingston. I know that reading is important. That's why I encourage them to do it as much as possible. One way to do that is by placing books all over the house. I'll show you how. <laughs> all right, stir the water just a little bit. Put the chicken on, put the chicken on. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> I love cooking. And sometimes my boys follow me into the kitchen and sometimes they're helpful and sometimes they're not. So I gotta find ways to keep them occupied so I can cook. How do I do that? Bam, a stack of books right next to me. I get to cook dinner and I'm happy. They get to read their books and they're happy and dinner gets done. So then after the water stirs a little bit, we put it on the chicken and then we dance a little bit around the kitchen. A little bit on the kitchen. <laughs> awesome. What about yours, Kingston? A bear. A bear. That's cool. This one's got cool colors in it. Here's the deal. The more kids see books, the better they feel about them. It's all about familiarity. And if you place books all around the house, they'll become familiar fast. Putting a basket of books in the bathroom is one of the best ways to squeeze in more reading time. You can even get some waterproof bath books. Show your kids that you like to pick up books wherever you are, and they'll learn to do the same. This one's a no-brainer. You gotta have books next to the bed. It makes it so much easier to grab them at bedtime. You can get fancy containers, but for me, a good old shoe box works just fine. 
because it bit my fingers so. When reading becomes a part of the routine, books become an important part of kids' lives. My kids love to wake me and my wife up super early, especially on the weekends. So we told them they had to read a book before they can come in. And that just got us 10 extra minutes of shut-eye. Don't forget to keep books in the car. It's a great way to squeeze in some extra learning, whether you're going on a long trip to grandma's house or just a quick trip to the store. Let's say I have a ton of laundry to fold. Well, I'll put a stack of books next to me, and if Diego's hanging out with me, I'll have him read a book, and when I'm done folding all this laundry, I'll sit down with him and we'll read a book together. Sometimes your kid will bring you a book at a random time. And let's face it, as parents, life gets busy. But you know, once in a while, just stop what you're doing, drop to the floor, and read with them. There you go. Books everywhere means reading everywhere, and that's a good thing. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost book time at your place. So share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Prefer to type your comments? Let us know what's on your mind below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Until next time, keep stacking those books. See ya. And sometimes these little guys follow in here. Ugh. Books become an important part of kids' lives. Zion, you know you weren't supposed to be up here. My kids love to wake up <clears throat> Here's a secret weapon. Our kids love to wake our... How many times are you gonna keep on doing this? My kids love to wake... Jeez, Louise. Until next time, keep those stack... It's this mic in front of me is making me nervous. That was a... Oh, you're so good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> And until next time, it's a great, a great, or a quick grocery run to, ugh, 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 my brain just stopped. Yeah. I can't read. Just look at the pictures. It's one of the best ways to, ugh. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost, boost, how you boost, wow, that's gonna be a weird one, boost. Does that, does that sound funny or is it just me? My Latino accent's coming in really strong there. Hashtag videos and pictures. Ugh. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging Mother Goose Club. <laughs> Mother... <laughs> <laughs>Today we're going to be using ABC floor mats to play and of course practice and build reading skills. This is another way for you to engage your kids and encourage them to stretch their minds and bodies and learn. There's so many different ways to use these floor mats. I'm going to show you a few right now. So let's get started. First activity we did with the mat was called ABC Roadway. We took the letters, we made a little road, and then we put a truck on that road. Inside the truck, we had a few different letters. With those letters, we pull those out, and then we drive the truck to the matching letter. What we gotta do is pull out a letter. So the letter in. So Lenny, we're gonna drive to the letter in. Show it to us so she will see what it looks like. Lenny, you see the letter? All right, keep it on the road, keep it on the road. And you're gonna pull it over there and you're gonna stop when you see the letter M. There you go. Yeah. All right, good job. Stop right there, that's the letter M. Good job. Um, Look at the car. Uh, H. H. F. Yeah. There's, a way, there's an H over here. Look, it's back over here at the beginning. What? That's where the truck started. <laughs> e. All right, so drive around, find, it, find the letter E. E. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, it's the E, look, it's E. <laughs> it's out. It's another O! Alright! Another O? Make another O. Yeah. Sweet. If you're having fun making O's, you keep making O's. For Lennon, it was more about letter recognition and celebrating the fact that, you know, she had hit the right letter. But for Isla, even when she drove the truck, once she got there, we really wanted to challenge her to come up with a word that began with the same letter that she had landed on. F is for four! <laughs> That's outside! Sometimes. 
Yes. The next activity we did was called ABC Twister. We spread out all the letters and let the girls really get active with this one. We call out a letter and they would place whatever hand or foot or body part they wanted to on the letter. Then we'd call out another letter and then that's where they really had an opportunity to stretch and we encouraged them to do so. That was a great way to engage their minds and their bodies and have a little fun. Okay guys, so I have this deck of letters here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this deck of letters, I'm going to call them out, and then I want you guys to go and find them, okay? You guys ready? Let's start out with the letter B. The letter B, go find it. Alright? Now. B! Alright, okay, great. H. You guys know the letter H? See, so you're receiving a reach with your foot, Isla. <laughs> nice, there you go. There you go, <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. G. You only have. Oh, look at these walls. These are pink. Oh man, you just need a little more leg and a little Wait, more. Wait, no, 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 no. What? Leg. Oh wow, wow. Well, almost. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. It was pretty good. The letter B for boy. You're a boy. I'm a boy. Another activity we did with the mass was to create an ABC hopscotch. Essentially, we brought the letters together and we put them in the shape of a hopscotch court. Then we gave them some bean bags, let them throw those out on whatever letter they chose. They call out the letter and then they hop right to it. So, Isla, you go ahead and give it a toss first and try to get one of those down there. Come on, further ones. And when you guys, when it lands, when the bean bag lands, make sure you guys shout out the letter, okay? Let's give it a toss. All right, when it lands. Ew. All. You're supposed to go to the queue. <laughs> see, see what you land on. Toss it around, we'll see what you land on. All right, so on the C. You land on the C. Okay, so hop to it. See if you can hop, hop to the to the C. <laughs> on the C. All right, grab the bag and bring it back. Grab the bag and bring it back. Okay, my turn. All right, let it go. We can show you how to make those bean bags too. Check out the links below. Another activity we came up with was called ABC Dice. We took one die, made it out of vowels, we took the other two dice and made them out of consonants, then we rolled them on the floor to see what words we could come up with. This one right here has consonants on it, this one right here has consonants on it, and this one right here has vowels on it. You're gonna throw out a consonant, and then you're gonna throw out a vowel. You toss that one since you have it in your hand already. Throw out a vowel. And then you're gonna throw out a, another consonant, okay? Hip! Hip! You can make hip out of that. There you go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Alright, let's see what you got. Uh, you have a P Y S. Alright, let's try let's try it again. Boingy. Uh okay. Mad! Mad, okay. There you go, get a nice hot toss. There you go. You can, you can have dim. Mid. Mid. Let's see. Team. Bot. Bot. <laughs> there you go, another. Like another, real bot. That's right. We had a ton of activities that we were able to do with these mats, whether it was the ABC Dice or the ABC Roadway. They had a lot of fun doing them. Today with the ABC Dice game with Isla, we tried to make it a little more competitive by adding the ticking clock. And I would encourage you at home to even go a little bit further. If you have two readers that are on the same level, you might be able to push that competition a little bit further and even have more fun with the game. I would have been really interested to see what free play games the girls came up with, what structures they would have built, what words they might have spelled, and how they would have used the letters on their own. And I think there are a lot of opportunities for that, particularly with this exercise. These ABC floor mats are a great way for you and your kids to get your minds and your bodies moving, so go for it. Let the games begin. And the fish swam together in the ocean forever. Wow, that was such a good yeah. story. Hey guys, I'm Jesse. These are my boys Diego and Zion. We love reading together. Reading with your kids is awesome, but there's also so many other little tricks you can do to make it even better. Talking about the book cover, for instance, is one of them. Here, I'll show you how. All you gotta do is ask a few questions about the cover and describe some of the things you may have noticed. And before you know it, your kids will be so excited to read and so much better at critical thinking. Check it out. All right, so what do you guys think this story is about? About two fish 
one's one's alone and one's happy. One's alone and one's happy. What about you, Zan? What do you think the story's about? Somebody's trying to get fishes. Somebody's trying to get fishes. Learning to predict what will happen is such a huge reading skill. Even asking the simplest questions about the character and the mood will help your kids develop that skill. Who do you think caught him? A boy. A boy. So you think it's gonna be a happy story or a sad story? Happy. Happy, yeah. What makes it, what's gonna make it a happy story? He's happy. He's happy, even though he's in the net? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think, Zion? Maybe he's in the water playing. Yeah, maybe he's in the water playing. Yeah, that's good. Before we read any book now, we talk about the author and the illustrator. It's such a great way to show the kids that books come from people's ideas and their work. This book's called Hot Dog Car. Do you see the hot dog on there? Um, the hot dog and he made some wheels and he made some glass. Yeah, so this story is by Louise Patel and it's illustrated by Patsy Chen. Is he clapping his hands in the car? He might be, but well, probably not. He's driving, so he's steering the hot dog wheel. So, oh. so um, what does an illustrator do? Um, do you know? Draws the pictures? Yeah, the illustrator draws all the pictures and they color the pictures. That way it's really exciting to read. Do you think that you, the illustrator used crayons, markers, nah, brushes? Crayons. crayons? What do you think? I think um, brush. brushes. like paint I, brushes? I think, paint I think, brushes. I also think, um, Sharpie. Sharpie? Sharpie? Sharpie. Possible, maybe Sharpie. a thin Sharpie, Sharpie. like Sharpie. around the hot dog part, yeah. but these are really cool, bright colors. Yeah, we're gonna read it together. When we talk about authors and illustrators, my kids see that they can also write and illustrate too. It's amazing how such a simple conversation may inspire them to make their own books. The great thing about book covers is you can talk about anything. When Zion only knew a few words, I'd ask him about colors, shapes, and basic objects. And while we did that, he worked on his vocabulary. You can mix it up and ask different questions depending on your child's age and their interests. Just make it fun. These are really like bright colors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's blue. a little bit of dark, you see. Yeah, it's got some dark blue in there, some aqua. It's like the ocean, blue, remember the ocean? Blue, orange, gray, gray in the bottom. What's gray? The net. The net's gray, that's good. Do you see some shapes in here? Oh, yes. A circle, an oval. Yeah, the oval inside. looks like, oh, right. A tiny bitty circle. Yeah, it was like little circles for the eyes. Diamond and square. Yeah, a diamond square. and square. That's, I didn't even a see that, that's good. A long rectangle. A long, that's right. A long rectangle. And there you go, book covers. A great chance to get your kids excited about reading, writing, and illustrating. So make sure you take a picture or a video of you talking book covers with your kids and hashtag it Mother Goose Club. We love when you subscribe and when you comment, so show us the love and catch more tips and activities on other Show Me How videos. And hey, keep rocking that reading time. Catch you later. Three, two, one. Right on. This is a great way for something cause, there, <laughs> and when. <laughs> they can illustrate and, t oh. they can tell, ah. Oh. <laughs> Reading books is, oh, that's not even the line. That's not what you told me to say. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, that's wrong. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you how. I'll show you how. That's you can, ah, oh, that confused me more. <laughs> this is a dad with three kids right here. After a while, I was like, dude, get off me. <laughs> we got this. Sorry, tons to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so many other. <sighs> All right, here we go. This is it, this is it. Or a video of you talking. Ah! So keep rocking that reading time. <laughs>
Excused? My. Please. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is my son, Benjamin. Did you know that talking to your baby is one of the most important things you can do to help his brain develop? It's true. Even though he doesn't understand everything I'm telling him, his brain is making important connections every time we chat. So I talk to him all the time. I'll show you how. <laughs> I talk to Benjamin through everything I do, even the everyday stuff, because it helps him learn new sounds and words. I look at him while I talk because seeing my expressions helps him understand how to communicate. Benjamin, would you like some scrambled eggs this morning? Mm-hmm. You want to watch Mama while I make them? Yeah? All right, first Mama's going to crack the egg. Put that in there. Do you hear that sound? Do you hear the cracking noise? Listen. Can you say crack? Crack. Good job, buddy. That's great. All right, now Mama's going to mix, 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 and stir, stir, stir. You want to help me? Yeah. Yeah? Can you stir that for Mama? Mix, 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 stir, stir, stir. See, Mama put the yolks into the bowl, and we stirred it around, and now Mama's going to pour it into the pan. You want to see? Watch Mama. Pour it in the pan. Wow. Benjamin, would you like some berries while Mama makes your eggs? Ah. Berries? Berries. Good job, buddy. Can you say berry? Yeah. Do you like strawberries? Yeah. yeah, strawberries are so delicious, aren't they? Don't be afraid to use big words. Even if Benjamin doesn't understand what I'm saying, he's hearing new sounds, and that's really important. Benjamin, I think your eggs are ready. Oh, yum. Let's pour them in a bowl so you can have some yummy eggs. All right, let's put this back on the stove, and let's blow your eggs because they're really, really hot. Can you blow them with me? Good job. Thanks, buddy. Blowing on them makes them cooler. All right. Here you go. You can eat them now. Uh. They're nice and yummy. Can Mama have a bite of your eggs? No. Oh, Mama's going to eat some too. Mmm. <gasps> mmm. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Yum, yum, yum. Can Mama have a bite of your hand? No! Because <laughs> it's so yummy. Mama can't help herself. You're so yummy. You just... I'm going to eat you up. Listen to your baby. If he shows interest in something, tell him all about it. And if he makes noises, repeat them back to him. This will show him that you're really paying attention. All done? All right. Can you count your fingers with me while we wipe? One, two, three. Four, five, good job. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yay! Good job, buddy. All done. Try chatting of your little ones at home. You'll find that even if they're not using words, they have a lot to say. And we need your tips. Share with us how you talk to your little ones by hashtagging pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club or commenting below. And while you're at it, subscribe to be the first to know about our new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is my son. Okay, sorry. Hi, I'm Sarah. Let me do that again. Every time we ta chat, talk, chat, 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 chat. Bless you. <laughs> Where is the tissue? Okay. I'm staying loose. <laughs> did you hear that? I mean, you probably didn't, but my stomach went right as it started. <laughs> I talk. Sorry, hair. Good grief. Can you help mama blow? Mm. No. I talk, <laughs> did it again. <laughs> I talk Benjamin through, no. Yes, I do. Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to, <laughs> because it helps him. Well, nope, it doesn't. <laughs> Oh. Ah! <laughs> Mother 
Goose Club Playhouse.